Hi, my name is Bill Dush. I'm a data scientist at IBM. For my advanced data science capstone project, I've classified toxic comments on the internet. This presentation will consist of three parts, a stakeholder presentation talking about the nature of this project, a use case demo showing the deployed model, and a technical presentation explaining the details of this project. So I will be first be covering a stakeholder presentation of this project. So here I will be talking about a uh, use case, uh, the data set, as well as a solution to the use case uh, showing a demo. This is designed for uh, non-technical audiences. So as we all know, the internet has become a, quite a nasty place. Uh, as you can see, like in various forms of social media, like Twitter or Facebook or even Wikipedia, and internet platforms struggle to effectively facilitate conversations. Sometimes they simply just shut down uh, their like forums, for example, like in newspapers. So we need to work on tools to improve online conversation. So uh, my question I, that I want to ask uh, is, is it possible to predict whether internet comments are toxic from the text they contain? And uh, we want to predict the probability of each type of toxicity, I'll explain that later for each comment. Uh, and uh, that's the idea. We want to be able to predict uh, toxicity from comments themselves so we can use it in a, in a model that could help screen comments for the future. So for my data set, I took data from a Kaggle competition which uh, tried to do this prediction, predicting toxic comments from uh, data. Uh, and uh, this was from the Conversation AI team, which is a research initiative uh, with uh, the alphabet companies like uh, Google and uh, Jigsaw. Uh, the data set they created was uh, around 1,200,000 comments in both a, a training and a test set. And the data set consists of a large number of Wikipedia comments labeled by human raters for toxic behavior. And uh, this is the data set that I'm going to be working with. So my solution to the use case is uh, deploying a deep learning model, which I have uh, created using Watson Machine Learning, which allows us to deploy published models. So a user can call the prediction model from an online source uh, via a REST API. This allows us to be able to put this in an actual uh, data project. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing next is giving a small demo on uh, how we can actually call the deployed model. So I'm going to cover the use case of uh, the deployed machine learning model. Now the first step is to download some things from uh, the NLTK. These are uh, different uh, packages that we need for the data cleaning. And here are the imports that we need. Okay, here we go. Now here is, uh, I uh, pickled the tokenizer which I used to prepare the model. So I'm uh, going to do that. Now these are the different types of cleaning functions and ETL functions. The first one's just like a list of different apostrophes for the, uh, the cleaning. This is the clean function itself. You don't have to worry about uh, what it actually does. I explained a little bit more in detail in my technical project. And finally, here's the ETL function, which uh, converts uh, the text into a vector. So as you can see here, uh, that's the original comments here, and here's the comments it's cleaned. As you can see, it removes things like IPs, lowercases the model, and uh, limitizes uh, things. And the next one is uh, the ETL process, which converts into a list of uh, indexes for each word. And this is the input that we need for the actual model itself. Now we can load the credentials for what's machine learning, and then actually run the, the actual scoring. And as you can see here, uh, we have predicted, uh, we have six different uh, predictions for the di different classes. To actually interpret what this means, I have this line here. And as you can see here, this comment that we had before has a 96% chance of being toxic, 80% chance of being an insult, 92% chance of being obscene. And uh, so this is something useful which we could put into, uh, uh, data uh, into a data project. So next I will be giving a technical presentation on the toxic comment classification project. I'll explain uh, issues related to the architectural choices for the model, a uh, bit about the exploratory analysis I did, the model itself as well as some precision metrics uh, that I've calculated. So I made a number of architectural choices that I needed for this project. For my development environment, I used uh, Watson Studio for the code itself. Uh, and uh, for the data storage, I used IBM's uh, CloudOptic storage. This uh, allowed us to hold everything in the cloud 
and uh, allowed us to simply just like call different uh, APIs as, as necessary. For exploratory analysis, I didn't use uh, Spark because it wasn't necessary. The data was only 100 megabytes uh, large. So I used uh, the standard uh, toolkit like Pandas, SciPy. And since this, this was an NLP project, I also used NLTK, Natural Language to, uh, Toolkit, as well as uh, Seaborn. For uh, my model itself, I used uh, Keras for deep learning. That was a package I was already familiar with. And I also have some experiences with uh, reoccurring neural networks. Uh, so I worked with uh, that. And for deployment, I used uh, uh, IBM's uh, Watson Machine Learning, which allowed me to uh, call a model uh, from the internet using a REST API after I published it. So in my exploratory analysis of this project, I used uh, the packages I mentioned before, like Seaborn and that, the NLTK. Uh, uh, and what I found like was that there was no missing data, so no comments was actually missing. Uh, most of the comments were clean. In other words, as you can see on the bottom uh, picture on the right, 90% uh, of them had no uh, toxicity tags. The tags specifically were called uh, toxic, severely toxic, obscene, threat, insult, and identity hate. Uh, and also some of the toxic labels are correlated. As you can see in this graph here, you don't have to worry about the specific. It's a metric called Kendall's tau used for uh, correlating binary data. Uh, toxicity is correlated with uh, uh, two others, as you can see there. Uh, they're, they're more red. Uh, in addition, you can see all these word clouds here. The word clouds between uh, clean commons and uh, toxic commons are very different. There's like more curse words within uh, the toxic commons. Well, they're just regular Wikipedia common words within the clean commons. So I had to create a pipeline for uh, the extract, transform, load, or ETL process. The first part was uh, cleaning the data. So essentially starting from the test comments and returning a text that has uh, some information pruned. I made sure that everything was lowercase. I removed uh, the usernames and IP from comments and some of them had that and that should be unnecessary for uh, determining whether something's toxic or not. Uh, I uh, expanded the, the contractions like your to a you are, and also limitized it, which essentially means uh, going, making a word into its most basic form. So we have like sample swim and swimming refer to the same basic word. Uh, then I did some feature engineering. I first tokenized uh, these comments. So made them into each comments now an array of, uh, of tokens with each index referring to the, the what word it is. Then I padded the sequences to a certain amount, like around 200 uh, words or so, or, or 200 uh, elements of the array. Then I transformed them to embeddings, uh, word embeddings, as you might have seen earlier in this course. Uh, I used a pre-trained glove embedding since uh, I thought the pre-training would be more useful in terms of uh, uh, creating the model instead of having to train the embeddings ourselves. And then this pipeline is uh, put into the model input uh, for our, our deep learning model. So I used the deep learning model for uh, the machine learning model that I did. I also tried a linear model as well, but it did not work as well. Uh, so, and this is uh, what you, you would typically see in natural language processing. Since this is sequential data, we want to use a deep learning potentially. Uh, uh, specifically for uh, a reoccurring neural network, which is good for sequential data. So the input is first put into an embedding layer, which is pre-trained from the glove embeddings that I talked about in the last slide. And that is uh, fed into a gated reoccurrence unit, which is a type of RNN, which is uh, similar in form to the LSTM, except there's less parameters, and so it's easier to train on, but has the same performance as a LSTM. And then it goes into a dense layer, a dense fully connected network, and then we go out to the output classes uh, with a softmax uh, activation to make it a, a multi-label classification problem. So my main model performance indicator was the micro average F1 score, which is a way of measuring the F1 score, which is a, a, a way of measuring both the precision and recall of uh, of the metric simultaneously. Uh, and I micro average it to uh, bias the metric towards the most populated labels because we had a asymmetric balance of the labels. And this is needed over accuracy because this is a highly unbalanced 
uh, thing where 90% uh, of the data is not labeled as any form of uh, toxic comments. So, uh, but the model was trained on accuracy, so you can measure the categorical accuracy on the test set, which was 86.7%, which isn't as good as I hoped it would be. I, I was hoping it would be in the 90% range. And uh, so we have issues here related to the fact that this is an unbalanced data set, which could tends to lead to uh, performance issues in a machine learning model. So that's it for my presentation. I have explained the big picture of the project for stakeholders, explaining the data set and use case of classifying toxic internet comments. I've shown a use case of the deployment of the model, which are available to see in Watson Studio Notebooks. I've explained the technical details of the project, including the architectural choices, exploratory analysis of the comment data, the ETL pipeline, the deep learning model, and the model performance indicators. I hope you have found this example of a natural language processing problem using machine learning to be interesting. And I thank you for watching. Goodbye.